Hi everyone, I'll be showing how to fix Grub on an encrypted Cache OS installation that uses BTRFS. If it was working before, and then you get this, or this, or if you're dual booting with Windows, and it goes straight into Windows, then I'll show how you can get Grub working again. When I power on my computer, it'll load the Cache OS boot file, which will then ask me for the passphrase to decrypt my partition where Grub is located. I then put in my password, and then Grub comes up, and as you can see, I am dual booting Cache OS with Windows. So before fixing Grub, I'll first have to break it. So going into Cache OS, log in. Now I'm gonna open up Dolphin or File Manager. And now I'm gonna go into the slash boot directory. This is where all the boot files are located. I'm going to go into the grub folder and we can see that there's a grub.cfg file here and this is the main grub configuration file that shows the boot menu we just saw and how to boot the operating systems and we also have here a grub-btrfs configuration file here and this configuration file adds menu entries specifically for booting from snapshots so you can roll back to a previous system state so if i were to delete both of these files and then reboot my computer, this is what will show up. And now going back out, and if I were to delete the entire grub folder itself, and reboot my computer, this is what will show up. And now there's an EFI folder here. If I go into it, now in this directory, the contents are not encrypted. So if I were to go into the EFI directory, so we have a directory for boot, directory for Cache OS and the directory for Microsoft. So if I were to go into the Microsoft directory, go into boot, and here would be all the files so that they could boot into Microsoft Windows. Going back out, going back out again, and then there's the Cache OS folder. If I go into it, there's a grubx64.efi file. That's loaded when my computer starts up. And going back out, there's a boot folder, and then there's a bootx64.efi file. And this file here is a fallback bootloader, and it comes along by default when you install Cache OS. So going back out, so if I were to delete both of these folders, the boot and Cache OS folders, so that means there's only the Microsoft directory here with the Microsoft EFI boot files, which means that if I were to reboot, it would boot directly into Windows as expected. And if you go into a BIOS, there would only be a Windows Boot Manager entry which would make sense as I've deleted the other bootloaders. So to fix Grub, I'll need the Cache OS installation media. And so the one I download is Cache OS Linux, the 2025 0.8.28 version. And I'm gonna restart my computer and boot from it. All right, the live ISO has booted up. And so I'm gonna go into Cache OS. All right, the live environment has started up and I'm gonna close the welcome screen. And now I'm gonna open up a terminal. And I'm gonna sudo in. And I'm gonna use lsblock to list my block devices. And SDA is my hard disk where I have Cache OS and Windows installed. And SDB is my drive where I have the Cache OS installation media. So looking at SDA, SDA5 is where I have Linux installed. You can see the file system type, it's Crypto Lux. And Lux is Linux Unified Key Setup. And so I'll have to open it up. And to do that, I'll be using Crypt Setup. So Crypt Setup, Open, Dev, SDA5. And I'm going to have to map it. I'll call it Crypt Root. and then put in the passphrase. All right, and if I do an LS block again, and we see there, crypt root and the file system type, btrfs, so it's available. And now I'm gonna be mounting the root subvolume, mount-o subvol equals at or root. And then it's under dev mapper, crypt root, 
and then I'll mount it into the MNT directory, the mount directory. And I go into the mount directory, ls-al, and we can see all of my contents for the cache OS installation. And if you have a similar slash boot subvolume, then you would mount it as well, similar to what I did with root. And of course, if you can't remember, you can always check your Etsy FS tab file. So do a cat Etsy FS tab file. We can see there that there's no separate slash boot subvolume. And I'll also have to make available slash boot slash EFI. And it has the UUID equals DE76 FC84. And so to find out the disk and partition for it, you can use block ID. So do block ID, pipe, and then grep for DE76. And then we can see here that it's under dev SDA1. So I'm going to mount it. Mount dev SDA1 to the mount boot EFI directory. All right, and I'm going to get out of this directory. There are four more directories that I'll have to make available slash dev, slash proc, slash sys, and slash run. So I'll mount dash b for slash dev to the mount dev directory. And then next, doing the proc directory. And then sys. And then run. Now I'm going to troot into the mount directory. Now I'm going to make the EFI variables available. Mount dash T, EFI var FS, none. And it's going to sys firmware EFI, EFI vars. And now I'm going to do a grub install. Grub install target equals x86 underscore 64 dash EFI. And then the EFI directory, it's going to slash boot slash EFI. All right, installation finished, no errors reported, so that's good. And if you're dual booting, you would want to check the Etsy default grub file to ensure it can see the other operating system. So in my case, Windows. So I'm going to open it up with nano. Etsy default grub. I'm going to scroll to the bottom using the arrow keys. And then look for the line grub disable OS prober equals false. So I'm going to remove the pound sign, the hash. So I'll be able to detect windows and then control X to exit. Save, yes. Write the file, Etsy default grub, enter. Now I'm going to do a grub make config. We'll make a new grub configuration file. And then the output will be to boot grub grub.cfg. All right, and you'll see a warning at the bottom. Grub make config needs to run at least once to generate the snapshots, submenu entry, and grub the main menu. After that, the script can be run alone to generate the snapshot entries. So as I'm running BTRFS, the warning just means that this is the first time generating the config and the snapshot submenu is being added, so it's fine. And I'm going to scroll up. And just to ensure that it has found the Windows Boot Manager, and so it has. And now I'm going to exit out of the root. And I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. Now I no longer need the Cache OS installation media. So if you have a USB drive, you can remove it. In my BIOS here, I have the Windows Boot Manager. And second option is Cache OS. So I'll have to change that. So Cache OS is first. And then I'll save changes and exit. Put in my passphrase. All right, grub starts up. So I got Cache OS. And there's the Windows Boot Manager. And there's Cache OS Linux snapshots. So I'm going to go into Cache OS. All right, and I'm able to boot into Cache OS. And I'm going to reboot to ensure I can get back into Windows. Select Windows. All right, and I'm able to boot into Windows. So that's it. That's how you can fix Grub on an encrypted Cache OS installation that uses BTRFS. I hope this video was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.